And um, the one that I thought we would do is this idea of Tonglen, giving and taking in Tibetan or taking and giving. And it's a really good way to overcome resistance. Um, and we all know that resistance makes anything that's difficult twice as difficult. And that when you are in the middle of a hardship, if you've decided that it's voluntary, it's sort of fine with you. And if you decided that it's against your will and not your choice, then there's more agitation. So this practice is kind of how to make everything feel voluntary, even if it's not voluntary. And even more than that, it's a way to keep your heart really open in the face of other people's hardships, even when you're in the middle of your own struggle. So the way the meditation goes is you start by, on purpose, consciously remembering all of the things in your life that you don't want to be the way. And you have to have a little bit of space and objectivity so you don't get sucked into the drama of it all or get depressed. So you think, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, relationships, just all the things you would rather were not the case. And you kind of put them out in front of you and then decide to take them back voluntarily. And you decide that each one of those is a gateway to developing your empathy and developing your compassion and also getting over the narrow mind that makes them a bigger deal than they need to be. And when you do that for yourself, then you consciously radiate out to uh, your friends and family whose daily troubles you know about. Um, and this is really interesting because when you're feeling, you know, held and seen and loved, you can bear witness to other people's suffering beautifully. But when you're caught up in your own stuff, other people's suffering might even subtly annoy you or trigger you in some way. And you might think, yeah, you've got it bad, but if you only knew what was going on in my life, you know, and there can be different sort of um, edges of um, not connection. So then you expand out and out and out and out to all sentient beings. So it's, it's a very counterintuitive meditation because you're saying, all that is difficult I want, and all that is joyful I give. It's the opposite of how we normally are. It's giving and taking. I take the suffering, I give the happiness. And um, it takes the form of black smoke that you breathe in, which sounds terrible, and you send out golden light that's radiant and lovely, and it goes out. And um, by doing it in this manufactured way in our imagination, it actually gives us more strength and robustness to be more like this in our daily life because it's actually the prison of self-cherishing that keeps our heart blocked and keeps our vision narrow and means that small things become a big thing. So it, again and again, this idea in Buddhism that when your world is big and expansive, there is room for any kind of disturbance and difficulty to be held without agitation. And the smaller the world becomes for you, the more agitating small things are. So that's the meditation and it's just kind of experimental. It's got some uh, visualization with it. And then if you have any questions afterwards, we can talk about it. So we'll start just very gently with um, some breathing meditation before we go into the analysis and visualization. So if you want to get yourself a nice posture, Nice and straight. Feeling stable and held by both your seat and your own body. Making any adjustments that you need to make so that it feels like there is good alignment and balance without strain. And then shift to setting a motivation. May this meditation open my heart, bring clarity to my mind so that I can be of most benefit 
to both myself and others. Creating a pocket of peace in this distressed world that then has a ripple effect radiating peace outward. And with that motivation, shift your focus to the breath. And just be with the simplicity and the directness of your own breathing without trying to control it or make it any kind of way. If it is shallow, you simply know that it is shallow. If it is deep, you simply know that it is deep. Just marry your awareness to it. As distractions arise, make the decision not to feed them. Allow them to dissolve naturally. Different thoughts and sensations occur to you and you don't push them away and you don't pull them forward. You just allow them to come and go naturally while remaining attentive with the breath. Allow everything else to fade to the background, not giving it your attention.
And now consciously shift to analysis and start by very kindly and gently listing your own difficulties to yourself with the objectivity of a scientist, with the kindness of a mother, just think about what don't you want to be the case. Things that are a struggle physically, pain, illness, age, impressions of beauty, etc. Just be with what you don't want to be the case physically for a moment. Make a list. And as you think about the different things that worry you about your body, ask yourself, is this unique to me 100%? Or are there others in the world having the same issue, even at the very same time? The same aches and pains, the same suffering of heat or cold, the same worries about beauty or age, the same illness. Allow yourself to feel connected to them, a community with those who have the same pain. And imagine all of this physical difficulty, all of the things that you don't want to be the case with your body, take the form of a billowing black smoke in the space in front of you. The smoke is like the shape of your aversions, of your worries, fears. The smoke looks toxic and ominous, like heavy pollution, like plastic being burnt. And then imagine within you courage and resilience engaged that thinks every one of these difficulties is a pathway to empathy. Every one of these hardships can help me connect to the human experience. And by letting go of resistance to it, my heart is more open and present for the distress of others.
And so you imagine voluntarily breathing all of this hardship back in, taking it back. But in no way it harms you, not at all. You give this billowing black smoke to the selfish attitude that makes your life too small, that makes all of your worries too big. Imagine this selfishness is like a shell or a shield surrounding your good, kind heart. As you breathe in the smoke, it begins to dissolve this shield. Giving your heart back its freedom. And so take back your pain on the in-breath. Take back your physical worries and anxieties, insecurities. Give them to this negative self-cherishing selfishness, which makes us self-conscious and fragile. that shell or shield covering your heart, becoming weaker and weaker. That beautiful happiness and goodwill at your heart center, more and more able to radiate out. And so then shift and think all of the things that you appreciate about your body, its independence, its level of health, the warmth that comes through your features, its ability to soothe and comfort. Just list for yourself what you appreciate about your physicality. And imagine that all that you appreciate about your body and your physicality takes the form of warm golden light at your heart because of self-cherishing selfishness, you try to hoard it and cling to it like trying to capture sunlight in your hands. And so instead of that normal tendency, Imagine sending out the radiant light of all of your appreciation and joys. Send out all that you appreciate about your body and physicality in the form of golden light on the out breath. Letting go of attachment to it, hoarding it or clinging to it.
You breathe it out, remembering it's impermanent. And you keep breathing it out until the golden light of your joy of it surrounds you, outside of you. And the light of this happiness and joy now outside of you. Imagine that you've let go of a degree of your attachment to it, clinging to it. And having done so, it now comes back to you, absorbing back into you. But this time free from attachment. And so imagining that you now see the issues around your body with a better perspective, shift your attention to the people in your life and their issues around their bodies, their health, their beauty, their energy level. And as you think of the different people in your life, imagine breathing in black smoke of their distress sending out the golden light of your joy and contentment. And each round of giving and taking, dissolving that shell that surrounds your heart, making you freer and lighter each round. Breathing in the black smoke of their distress breathing out the golden light of your joy and happiness. Starting with issues of the body. You can think that you take whatever they think of as their ugliness and you send them whatever you think of as beauty. That you take whatever they have labeled as pain and send them whatever you think of as comfort. All in the form of taking black smoke, giving golden light. Taking what they consider to be illness, giving what you consider to be health. Each cycle of breath, making your heart freer more expansive, less self-absorbed.
each cycle of giving and taking, lifting them out of their worries, out of their own self-obsession and self-consciousness. Each cycle of breath connecting you, opening pathways between you. So compassion and love can flow. And now shift from thinking about the physical issues of yourself and others to thinking about the mental issues of just yourself at first. The things that you don't want to be the case. The habits within your own mind you wish weren't there. The worries and stresses and anxieties. Allow yourself to name them with some objectivity and space without getting pulled into the drama of them. List for yourself what worries you. Might be in external things like relationships, finances, worries like work, or it could be about your inner conversation issues of insecurity or self-hatred, anger or defensiveness, melancholy, etc. Allow yourself to name them without getting sucked into them. Just allow that list. The things that worry you about your outer life. The things you acknowledge are problematic about your inner life.
And then think of and imagine all the people in the world who have these same issues, perhaps different details, but the same basic problems. And by thinking of these other people, it in no way diminishes your own suffering in terms of its significance. It diminishes your suffering in terms of feeling alone with it. Allow yourself to feel connected to those others who suffer in the ways that you suffer. and think every one of these problems in my life, outer and inner, are potential pathways for self-awareness, self-development, connecting to the human condition, pathways of empathy to others. Every single one of them is fuel for my practice potentially. And so what my mind normally says it doesn't want, decide to voluntarily take back. Using it differently. Seeing it differently. All of these problems taking the form of black smoke billowing in front of you. Toxic and ominous. And it's as if you mentally straighten your shoulders and straighten your back, recalling your courage and your resilience. And at the same time, deciding to let these things soften you and open you. Breathe them back in. And with each in-breath, that false shield, that illusory protection that prevents your heart from being free and full, dissolves. Breathing in black smoke, giving it to the self-cherishing thought, the selfishness that limits our ability for open-heartedness and full joy. These issues came from the self-cherishing thought. Give them back to the self-cherishing thought. The negative type of self-obsession that makes our world too small and makes our problems too big, that limits our perspective. Breathing back in the smoke and dissolving that tendency. Allowing the view to widen. Allowing the heart to expand.
and then shift to thinking about what is going very well in your life, externally and internally. The good connections and relationships, the resources and abundance, as well as your inner development, your compassion and kindness, your insight and flexibility. Just think about all of those things that are going very well in your outer world and in your inner world. The tools and supports you already have. List them for yourself. Name them. And with all of these joys of your outer world and your inner life, imagine them as a warm golden light at your heart center. But because of the selfish attitude, the tendency is to cling and guard, to worry about its transitory nature, to become afflicted about it and feel entitled. And so that joy of our life is smaller than it can be. It's again like trying to hold sunlight in your hands. And so open back out and breathe out this golden light of all the joys of your outer and inner worlds. Let go of your attachment to it. Your clinging to ownership. Your hopes for stability and permanence. Let it form a golden cloud around yourself, outside yourself. Keep sending it out on the out breath. Breathing out golden light. An awareness of this warm golden light all around you occurs to your mind. And imagine that now that all of your joys have been released from their attachment and clinging, they come back to you, flowing back into you through your pores, nourishing your body and mind with all that is supportive healthy and joyful. 
but now it's free from attachment and clinging. There's flexibility and movement with it. Gratitude instead of entitlement. And you shift your attention to the people in your life. What is going on for them in their outer world, their relationships, work, finances, etc. And what you imagine to be the case in their inner world in terms of their worries and anxieties. And imagine taking that suffering from them in the form of black smoke. and sharing and giving your happiness to them in the form of golden light. You can think of one or two people or many, but try to have a directness, breathing in black smoke, giving it to your self-cherishing thought sending out golden light, giving them peace and contentment. Again and again, very gently, these two ideas riding on the breath. Taking, we connect with compassion. Giving, we connect with love. Breathing in and breathing out. Each cycle of breath opening up more and more connections between you. Dissolving more and more tendencies of selfishness. Some people in your life, this is easier to do for than others. Gently try to stretch yourself to do the giving and taking with some people who frustrate you or for whom you know your heart is blocked toward. your heart becoming more and more free. Any tightness or hardness of heart dissolving. And then allow yourself to become more abstract, 
by taking the suffering of the world and its inhabitants, giving it to your own self-cherishing, releasing you from it, as well as releasing any version, any tension you have about observing the distress of the world. By taking it in, you get out of your own way. You can see it in balance without becoming grief stricken. You can touch the suffering, having compassion instead of grief. Steadiness and peace instead of anxiety and fear. Breathing in the suffering of the world in the form of black smoke. Breathing out golden light, happiness, contentment, health, sending it all over the world to all living beings. again and again, breathing in compassion, breathing out love, breathing in black smoke, breathing out golden light, breathing in self-cherishing dissolves, breathing out cherishing others increases. Just very gently, without altering your breath or its pace. And then let go of your visualization and let go of your focus on the breath, but hold the ideals of loving kindness and compassion expansively and freely resting at your heart center. Free of the prison of self-obsession and narrow focus. And then we finish with the mantra of action and protection. Wong tare tu tare tu re so ha. Om tare tu tare tu re so ha. Om tare tu tare tu re so ha. 
Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Soha 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 and relaxing your attention. mind that meditation can be very soothing or it can be very confronting and either way it's useful but um, when you're doing it on your own you can do it in a much shorter way you can do it in a longer way more specific more general you can really um, adjust it to suit what you need but um, just the concept of giving and taking is something you can bring even to non-meditative times, like uh, in traffic, in the queue at the grocery store, things like this, where you feel protective of your own peace and you feel um, tight about your own distress. You can think, I breathe it back in, I send out happiness, and immediately the state of mind um, balances out. So um, you can do this in a very simplified form. Um, do you have any, any questions or um, comments? I want to say it was a very challenging one for me. It went very deep, but I it was very good, and I want to thank you for that. <laughs> Thanks, Abigail. Yeah, it's confronting this one. Yeah, but um, yeah, useful. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, there's a lot written about this um, particular topic in this particular meditation. So if you're curious, you can have a you know, go down a rabbit hole on the internet. Um, but Venerable Pema Chodron speaks really beautifully about it, um, as well as uh, Roshi Joan Halifax. So if you're curious about more, I recommend those two. Um, yeah, any other questions or thoughts? I had a question about where, um, like sort of mental illness sits. Is it emotional pain or is it physical pain? Because on one hand, it can be very much like a issue of brain chemicals on the other hand it's also linked to emotional health so yeah i'd leave it to the experts here <laughs> i would say it's um both yeah this is a short answer right would you guys agree you yeah, experts mm -hmm. <laughs> both is the short answer um I think that, you know, brain chemicals aren't to be neglected or put aside in terms of a cause um, or a condition, but I think that we know that the more um, we're looking at the way that we, we think, the more we can actually change our brain chemistry as well. And, you know, it, I think being gentle enough with yourself to, to know that there are certain patterns within the mind that might remain to be patterns for our whole life but our relationship to them and our management of them can change drastically as time goes by. You know, just as if you were someone with um, diabetes and you didn't know it, you might eat the wrong things. Then once you know that you have diabetes, you change the way you eat. It doesn't mean that you don't have diabetes anymore, but it means that now your management of it means that your level of health is much increased, but it's something that you have to know exists as a tendency or as a pattern within your system. So a bit like that. So it's always with this huge friendliness towards yourself, you know, that anything that is problematic within you didn't come from you in and of yourself, right? Everything is a coming together of multiple conditions, whether they're genetics, whether it's nature, whether it's nurture, it's always a coming together of so many conditions. So to have excessive ownership of one problematic tendency is um, not helpful, but it's also not true. You know, it's like it lives here, but it's not yours. Yeah, I don't know if that helps, but, but yeah, gentle, gentle and not with too much ownership or identification with, the, with your own troubles while at the same time working on them. 
Yeah. How do we know that what we do helps the other person? How well, would we you know? Yeah, yeah. Tonglen can help the other person, but not necessarily in an immediate way. What it does is that it overcomes our resistance to their pain. Right. So then when we're in front of their pain, we're not adding pain to pain by saying, oh, that's too much for me. I can't quite hold the space for you. This is too intense. You've gotten over yourself and your own resistances. So then when you are either physically with them or thinking about them, you're not sending out more conditions for agitation. And you're mm. actually able to send out more conditions for peace. Whether they use those conditions for peace or not is very much related to their own system. So it's mm. not like you can force peace. <laughs> Otherwise, the Buddha's no. forcing peace on all of us all the time and just <laughs> say, be happy, be well, done. <laughs> you know. Um, so Tonglen does help the other person, but not in as direct a way as the meditation goes. You adopt this attitude in med meditation, and then when you're with mm. people, it has a direct impact in terms of the conditions you bring. Of course, if you have very, very strong karmic connection with someone, there can be a more direct thing, but that's, that's a much rarer case and um, something that our level we can't make happen. It might incidentally happen, um, but we shouldn't imagine that to be the main plan. The main plan is to overcome our own resistance to bearing witness to suffering, both our own and others. Because if we don't have resistance to it, then creativity is opened back up. Mm -hmm and uh, anything to do or not do becomes clearer. So if we can get rid of resistance, um, then we just have so many more possibilities. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.